Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us. Above us, only sky. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 98 of the Ron and Brian podcast. I'm Ron, as always, joined by the man who the NYPD has asked multiple times to stop going up to women on the street and offering them his stimulus package, Brian. Brian, how goes it in the midst of this worldwide pandemic? Um, I would be lying if I said I'm doing well. Okay, fair enough. Um, well, we will get into that and many more things. If nothing okay. else, let's get started with a drink. Drink of the week. Salud. Drink of the week. Slancha. Drink of the week, drink of the week, drink of the week. Uh, drink we did not, week. with everything going on in the world, we didn't quite have time to get a poll up this week for drink of the week. So it is dealer's choice yet again this week. Brian, what are you bringing to the table as your drink of the week? This week, my drink is vitamin water, uh, zero sugar, triple X. Really? With Yeah, why? With some alcohol mixed into that? Absolutely. I have not had a drink in nine days. And really? On the wagon, yes. Brian. All right. Uh, yeah, I just, I, I literally do not feel like drinking whatsoever. I don't believe it would be good for me. All right. Fair enough. Uh, well, we uh, made a trip out today uh, over to New Jersey since all of our liquor stores here are closed. We did practice social distancing in the store. So, just want to make everybody aware of that. And I found uh, my holy grail, if you will, something that I have been searching for for a while. It's been out of stock. I found a four-pack uh, at Total Wine in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. It's the Pabst Blue Ribbon Hard Coffee. Uh, I have surprisingly okay. have heard many good things about this. It's, uh, what, 5% alcohol. I've heard people taste uh, say it tastes kind of like a Yoohoo. So, uh, bottoms up, I'm going to let you know how this is. I'm not, this may be the, I cannot even believe there was ever a time where oh. I was going to hear you say the phrase Paps Blue Ribbon during this podcast. You just went for a second sip. Ron, how is it? That That is damn good. Really? Holy, holy shit, that's good. Hold on, one more time. Uh, Ron, this Mr. Taste, Mr. This Snob tastes, himself. I, I, credit to uh, to the folks at PBR. This tastes pretty much like a Yoohoo. Like it is, um, I don't know that I could drink a lot of this because it's, it's got some sweetness to it. But god damn, is this tasty. Now, mm. what is it again? A it Pabst, Blue, Pabst Ribbon. Blue Ribbon hard coffee. It says this is the original Pabst Blue Ribbon hard coffee. Iced coffee with a dash of milk. This Java brew balances a rich, creamy blend with a whipped vanilla flavor. Does it do that, my friend? Yes, it does. Mm. I'm shocked. I am genuinely Listen, shocked. And and I, I can't believe I'm telling you this. Go out and get yourself some PBR hard coffee when you're ready to take up drinking again. I, I, we'll see when that day happens. All so right. I, I'm just shocked. I'm stunned. Listen. Uh, uh, flabbergasted. <laughs> I did not believe. Everybody kept saying this that this was very, very good. Um, I, you know, I, I took it with a grain of salt, but I was like, all right, I saw a four pack. Let me try it. Let me see if it is as good as people say it is. Um, hands down, it is. So uh, I was wrong. Kudos to all the people that recommended it to me. Uh, in the meantime, right. we will work on getting a drink of the week poll up for our next episode. If not, I think we definitely need to have a poll for a special poll for our 100th episode, uh, which is coming down the pike very quickly. Uh, but in the meantime, let's talk racism. This week in 
racism. 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 Well, Brian, I know this will make you happy. Hans Berglund uh, blew past the Corona racist teen for his second win. Uh, he was clearly well rested after being on the bench for a few weeks. Uh, the Corona racist teen not putting up much of a of a fight. And Hans Berglund uh, continues on looking for win number three. You called it. You're a big fan of Hans. How do you feel this week? Listen, I always knew that Hans had a lot to be, uh, uh, you know, he had a lot to offer society as a whole. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, when you get into the ring with Hans Gruber, he looks at you and he says, uh, you can walk out of here or be carried out. Um, you're just an another American who's seen too many movies as a child. And, uh, you know, Hans Gruber is not somebody to fuck with. Take him seriously, people. All right. Uh, especially bad week for the Corona racist teen as the 13 year old boy was arrested this past week by NYPD and has been charged with hate crime assault and hate crime aggravated harassment. Uh, His name has not been released due to his age, but they are implying that they will attempt to try him as an adult. Uh, In the meantime, we do have a contender. You would think with all of the shelter in place and everything else, the the self-isolation going on, we would have a hard time finding racism out there. And we did. This is actually from a few weeks back. This fell through the cracks, and I'm a little embarrassed that we didn't catch this one before. But we're going to pull this out. We're going to make this a a solid contender for Hans Berglund. Uh, We're going to go out to the West Coast, out to Oregon. Uh, A gentleman by the name of Ricky Forbido. He was caught on video going on a racist rant at Chinook Winds Casino. Uh, He allegedly became agitated when a casino manager patted him on the back while talking to him. Uh, Another player at the table, Will Butler, came to Forbido's defense, but Forbido stated that he didn't want Butler's help because Butler is black, although did not quite put it in those terms. Let's take a listen to Ricky's audio. Quite the high uh, N-word per minute uh, content there. Uh, not the first time Forbido was caught on video. Uh, after this uh, video went viral on Facebook, uh, another video surfaced from the Final Table Poker Club in Portland, Oregon, where he is seen threatening a female player with sexist slurs and twice warning people at the table that he was a, quote, fucking Nazi, end quote. Um, so... There you have it, uh, Ricky Forbido, a classy individual. He will be going up against Hans Berglund in This Week in Racism. So as always, go to our Facebook page and our Twitter page to vote in the polls that we will have up there. Brian, um, this is a tough one. I know you've been on the Hans train for for quite a while now. Does he match up uh, to what Ricky Forbido is bringing to the casino table? I just got off the ex- the uh, local, and I just jumped on the express, the racism express. We have a new winner. This guy is going deep. Yeah. So uh, now again, you, the fans, are the final judge. So your votes will decide: Will Hans get win number three, or is Ricky going to be our uh, our new champion? So again, head to Facebook head to Twitter, or just go to ronandbrianpodcast.com with links to all of our social media. Ricky's Ricky's brought it this week. What's that? I'm I'm sorry, sorry, but Ricky... I don't want to interrupt you. Ricky fucking brought it this week. That is is some some grade A level racism. And I will say that is is only a a one minute 
uh, caption of the entire uh, video clip that was caught. I think there was another like good minute and a half, two minutes of him. Jesus. Um, and surprisingly, they say he may have been intoxicated. Now, can you explain to me again exactly what ha- like what led up to this? Okay. So uh, uh, the story as, and again, this is coming from uh, the gentleman, uh, this gentleman, Will Butler, who uh, was there and witnessed it. Um, apparently, Mr. Butler went to this casino to play in a, uh, uh, a poker tournament, sits down at a poker table just to play a few hands before the tournament. Ricky Ferbino apparently is sitting at the table. Um, he's obviously very drunk, smelling of alcohol. And so just one of the casino uh, workers kind of just come up behind him and, you know, just kind of said something to him, you know, just kind of whatever, and just pats him on the back while talking to him. And that just apparently set him off. And so then the casino people are trying to, like, get in Ricky's face. So uh, Will Butler is like, no, you know, he shouldn't have touched him. People don't like being touched. And that's when uh, Ricky Forbido decided to just be like, well, I don't want your help because you're a black man not putting it in quite those terms and then it just really escalated from there my goodness this is the best racism we've had in a long time and then to top it all off the casino was going to let him sit back at the table and gamble Ugh. well and i mean it's all about the money and, the, and when when literally everybody else in the room was like are you fucking kidding us like you need to kick this piece of shit out or ah as, it's harsh as ricky said about himself he's a fucking nazi Oh, uh, I, I, you know, when when you've had a couple drinks, I think everybody can claim they've been a Nazi at some point in their lives. <laughs> I don't know how many drinks you've had to be able to say that. I, I haven't hit that point. Um, hold on. Have I ever? No, I don't think I've actually ever said that I was a Nazi. I, I, I even even in my drunkest. All right, good to know. <laughs> that is a positive thing to hear from you. All right, absolutely. Uh, ready to beef it up? Uh, I guess. <laughs> Ron and Brian's Beef of the Week. Um, so if I can start, if you don't mind this week. Um, Feel so, free. So my, uh, my beef this week is with people that are continuing to hoard supplies that other people need. I mean, that was, that I, was my beef. I, I go to the grocery store and it's like the toilet paper is still depleted. You know, the meat's still depleted. You know, uh, you know, and, and it's not even I, I'm not even going there getting stuff for my house. So like we're thankfully set. But it's like ridiculous that we are a few weeks into this and people are still you know, I even went to Costco and not not a not a roll of toilet paper in the entire Costco while I was there. Um, just ridiculous that we can't be adults and help everybody out. Why can I just ask a question of out, of, you can. out of stupidity? Why on earth are people hoarding toilet paper before everything else? And I know you're going to sit there and say because everyone goes to the bathroom and it's something that everybody needs. But where did the idea come that a virus that attacks your immune system that's ca- makes you feel like you have a cold? or a bad flu, why does that make people immediately go out and start buying unnatural amounts of toilet paper? Uh, That I don't know. And and that's been a point a few people have made. It's like, all right, like if diarrhea was one of the symptoms, you could almost, you know, see it. Um, And there was a guy, I was watching a video, he, he did the math as to like, if you bought one of those things of uh, from Costco, like you would, you would literally be able to take like forty-five shits in a day and like make it through a month. Like it's it's insane how much is in one of those mega packs at the Costco. So yeah, so that part I don't get. Like, all right, I, I get the cleaning supplies to an extent. I get the Clorox wipes. Um, I get you know the the bleach and the disinfectants. Um, but I mean, yeah, now people can get. Um, you can get tissues, you can get, you know, like uh, facial tissues, you can get paper towels, which you would think those would be things that would be, you know, if people are buying cleaning supplies, you would think they'd be buying up the paper towels. If people are worried about getting, you know, a cold-like symptom, you would think they'd be buying tissues. Uh, but toilet paper still is the big thing. Makes no sense to me. And I know we don't make sense. We are... Um irrational we are uh you know inherently selfish uh we're 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 terrible animals but this this uh 
you know, the reaction that people have to this. I mean, think about it. You're drinking Pabst Blue Ribbon right now. <laughs> I, the, I mean, the level of lunacy that is going on right now is just earth shaking. I'm a little disappointed that I didn't bring a second can up with me. Um, I would not be shocked if at any moment you just say, hey, let's hit pause on this for a moment, <laughs> and I'm going to go get another can. I mean, if you want my true beef, it's that there's only 11 fluid ounces in a can of Pabst Blue Ribbon hard coffee. I could go for 16. Now we get to the real beef. That's that. I Now I feel I have a new beef of the week. Okay. Can I give a, can I give kudos to, uh, I know we don't really do kudos of the week, but I would like to give props uh, out to an organization out there if I can. Nambla? Uh, not this week, maybe next. Okay. Uh, but okay. actually the fine folks at Target, and I'm going to tell you why. We, uh, they apparently have been doing this curbside pickup thing for a while, unbeknownst to me, which is now perfect for this day and age. So we had some items that we needed to get. They had them in stock at Target. We were like, well, we don't really want to have to go into the store. You know, obviously social distancing, all of that. So we ordered them through the app, uh, selected the curbside pickup. You get an email um, that says, all right, your stuff's ready to pick up. So you go into the app and you give the, you know, you kind of give the color and the, the model of your car and you can turn on your location services. So as you actually drive into the Target parking lot, it will trigger the store and say, like your app actually pops up and says, oh, we see that you're here. We'll bring your delivery out. Sure enough, we pull into the curbside pickup spot. Woman comes out, takes our phone, scans the barcode, puts the stuff in our car. Bing, bang, boom, we're gone in like a minute. So if we have something like that, why are we fucking hoarding supplies? This is what I don't understand. Like, they they legitimately made it as easy as possible for us to go get what we needed and not yeah. have to really have, like, that, that, that face-to-face interaction that is putting so many people at risk. It's mind-boggling. Absolutely mind-boggling. Like, I give credit to... People who work at the cash registers at Target, people who work in the grocery stores, like they are out there on the front line making shit money, um, putting up with horrible treatment and, you know, opening themselves up to potentially getting this disease or any other disease that Lord knows what people are walking around with. I actually would just like to give kudos to anybody that's been deemed an essential worker. Yes. You know, anybody that is working for uh, any type of industry that is deemed essential. You know, you mentioned earlier how uh, in uh, Pennsylvania they close liquor stores as non-essential. Uh, New York State, obviously Jersey, um, they're open. You know, so if you work in a liquor store, showing up, not showing up for work is uh, not an option. No, you know, not at all. It's, it's how you lose your job. I have a, a friend who works as a, uh, you know, uh, for a maintenance company. Um, kid wakes up every morning and goes to work knowing full well that, uh, you know, he could be putting himself in jeopardy. Everything in the news says, stay home, stay home, isolate, uh, quarantine, whatever you got to do, fuckers, but stay away from each other. But you got people who are working, um, in many cases, not what is considered the most glamorous of jobs. And these are the people that are waking up, showering, getting dressed and, and, and putting in the same day that they normally do. Um, don't have the luxury of working remotely. Don't have the luxury of, uh, you know, being told by their boss, uh, you know what, don't come in or come in Monday, Wednesday, Friday, take Tuesday and Thursday off. We're trying to cut down on the people. You know, it's uh, it's. You know, those are the people that we really should be grateful for right now. No question. Um, And of course, you know, we try and give a little something back to the people whenever at all possible. So uh, we are currently uh, working on giving away uh, a spanking brand new Ron and Brian podcast baseball cap. Uh, You might have seen the commercial on our Facebook or Twitter page. Apparently, it was a little too big for Instagram to handle. Still haven't figured that one out, but whatever. Uh, So in case you missed it. Here's our commercial. Hi, friends. We know that there are many of you out there in the same situation as Ron right now, adjusting to live in a world where you can't get a haircut. A world in which you soon might not be able to get hair product. Yes, dark days indeed. Well, have we got the solution for you. That's right, it's the official Ron and Brian baseball cap 
cover up your mess of a head while looking stylish at the same time. We want to help out during these uncertain times, so we're giving away a free cap to one lucky person out there. All you need to do is like, comment, and share this post, and you're entered to win. We'll be picking a winner this Wednesday, March 25th. What's that? You'd like to be able to get a baseball cap even if you don't win? And you'd like access to hours of amazing podcast content? Well, you're in luck. Just go to ronandbrianpodcast.com and you'll find links to our entire catalog of episodes as well as our web store, where in addition to our baseball cap, you can find stickers, magnets, and an item we've been putting to use a lot these past few weeks, shot glasses. Wait, you want more? You want to be able to get this great swag along with exclusive Ron and Brian content? Fair enough? Then join our Patreon. The link is on our website, or you can go directly to patreon.com forward slash the Ron and Brian podcast and choose one of our great subscription levels. Remember, like, comment, and share this post for a chance to win. Stay safe, stay inside, but most importantly, stay woke. All right, so as we mentioned, go to our Facebook or Twitter pages or both. There's no reason you can't apply on both and just uh, like Uh, comment and share those posts and you'll be entered uh, for a chance to win one of those awesome baseball caps um brian i can't believe we keep giving as much as we do but here's just another example of it i think uh you know it's uh we have we have some of the best fans in the world and i think it's time for us to uh uh you know give back some of the uh uh, the thanks that they have uh, given us over the years. Yes. And I know some people out there are saying, Ron, isn't that the same background music you used for the Ron and Brian supplement commercial last week? Well, listen, I paid five bucks for that music. I'm going to get my money's worth out of it, and you're just going to have to deal with it. <laughs> Brian, should we talk about, if you will, the elephant in the room? Sure. The elephant um, being your potential exposure um, to this coronavirus. Um, are you caught up in the pandemic? I honestly cannot say whether I am or not. Okay. I, I would like to be able to say no. Ron, I feel great. I have no uh, I, uh, no symptoms that would lead me to believe that I might uh, uh, have the uh, coronavirus coursing through my veins. Unfortunately, I don't think that I can. So uh, why is it you think that? Give us give us okay. kind of a rundown of uh, all of the areas that made make you believe you might have uh, the coronavirus. I've had a cough for over a week. Now keep okay. in mind, last Friday, um. I felt perfectly healthy. Okay. Perfectly healthy. Uh, For the past week plus, I have had a cough. This cough varies from a dry cough to a mucousy cough to a dry cough, which may or may not have something to do with the level of dairy I'm intaking. I just kind of learned that not that long ago that it could be related. Um, I feel like I do have a fever. Um... I find myself going through uh, periods where I am uh, chilly to uh, times where within literally uh, a couple of minutes later, I am profusely sweating as I am right now. Um, I was cold earlier, right before we did this podcast, I put a hoodie on uh, to warm up and now I am sweating. Uh, what else? Uh, I'm coughing. Uh Oh, also, I've uh, uh, lost my sense of appetite Okay. Um, over the past uh, uh, little less than uh, uh, two weeks. I've lost over 10 pounds from uh, uh, not really having any desire to eat very much. Uh, what else? Where's, what, what are the other symptoms that I... Uh, well, I guess maybe... one, uh, feverish at all? Yeah, absolutely. I'm okay. sweating at times. I feel very warm. Um, I guess maybe, you know, a question is in, in looking, you know, in places that you've been, uh, people you've been around, uh, are you aware of anyone that you have been in contact with that may uh, have the coronavirus? Can't say yes, and I cannot say no. All right. I mean, it could just be, uh, do you have allergies? Is that possibly a uh, part of the situation? My entire life, I uh, had allergies, but they are fall allergies. Okay. I've been uh, diagnosed as being allergic to ragweed, which is uh, prevalent in the late summer, early fall months. And have you gone to get yourself tested as of yet? No. 
Okay. And why is that? Well, I mean, the reason why I have not been tested is I'm fi I am following the guidelines that my uh, local government is offering, which is um, unless you are over the age of 70 and unless you have uh, a, uh, a weakened immune system, uh, if you feel that you uh, are coming down with it, uh, stay home, stay isolated, as long as the uh, symptoms remain mild. All right. So you are actually listening to what the experts out there are telling you. Well, I, I believe that what the experts are telling me is what I'm going to be told if I get to an emergency room. That's fair. Which is, if I walk in there, they're going to say, how are you feeling? I'm going to be like, well, I have a cough and I feel like I have a fever or whatever. And they're going to just be like, you, there's not a bed here for you. Go home. OK, um, well, all we can uh, hopefully do is, you know, thoughts and prayers, obviously going out for you. And hopefully it is just a cold. It could be a spring cold. A lot of people get these with the uh, extreme Never had it before. In temperature. This is the first time I've been sick in over two years. I'm just uh, I'm trying to be uh, trying to be positive. If I can tell you one positive thing, please do, which is the fact that I have felt this way for what are we going on, about nine days? Okay. And from what they're saying is that uh, if you have a mild case of this thing, it should work its way through your system in about two to three weeks. So you could be uh, you could be on the tail end of this. Or at least beginning it. Um, right. So that's, that's what I'm clinging to. I honestly don't know that I have it. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping that if, it, if I do, it stays this way. And eventually I start to feel better. Okay. Um, so obviously, you know, coronavirus is the topic that won't <clears throat> won't go away. Um, we see it all over the place. There is, you know, uh, so many, uh, I guess, uh, aggravating uh, videos and news stories out there. Um, I think one of the most aggravating things I saw this week was everybody at spring break on the beaches in Florida, um, not really concerned about um, whether they were going to catch the coronavirus or not. Did, did you see some of these videos out there, these spring breakers? I think the fact was that they saw themselves as um, being immune to the effects of it. And now it's, a lot of them it is are... Ignorance. Yeah, a ignorance lot of them are at testing. its worst. Well, those kids weren't even getting tested for STDs, let alone <laughs> coronavirus. So... Well, I, again, you know, they, there's obviously some uh, some videos that went very viral, um, but it, it is frustrating that people don't seem to listen. Um, and again, I think Florida is, is finally closing their beaches. They're finally putting those restrictions into place. Um, but it's it, what, what is crazy is I don't know if you are uh, familiar with this company called Kinsa Health. No. All right. So uh, they uh, they are a company that uses internet connected thermometers to uh, predict the spread of the flu. Um, they've sold or given away uh, more than a million smart thermometers to, to different households, um, recording any you know two plus million people's um, temperatures. And so by tracking that for the past few years. Um, they have created these interactive maps uh, that have accurately predicted the spread of the flu uh, around the United States, uh, usually about two weeks ahead of the CDC's own surveillance tool. And okay. not surprisingly, um, right now, uh, South Florida is a hotbed uh, for hot temperatures. Um, so right now, South, uh, South Florida appears to be another epicenter uh, for COVID-19 fuck so yeah it's it's pretty crazy and there's there's a map and maybe we'll share this on the uh on the on the facebook page but it, it will literally show you a, a map of the country and it will show you where temperatures illness levels are low mild moderate high and severe and like most of florida is now in the severe red color but you know what as much as i'd like to say <clears throat> Excuse me. As much as I would like to blame those stupid college students for uh, uh, partying on the beach, uh, the real the real blame in my eyes is on uh, city officials, local governments for uh, not heeding the warnings of, uh, you know, what we've seen in Europe, what we've seen in California, New York, uh, Washington state. And by allowing uh, uh, all these uh, uh, 
facilities to remain open. And those bars should have been closed. The beaches should have been closed. Like, even if the kids don't want to uh, uh, be responsible, there are elected officials that uh, should be putting the uh, the public health before anything else. And I would, uh, I'm actually going to agree with you 100% on that. I mean, this is really an area where the government, whether it's a city, uh, state, federal, you know, where the government needs to step up and take steps to protect the public when the public can't seem to protect themselves. And you're perfectly right. You know, now they are finally closing the beaches. But for a while there, you know, like Clearwater Beach was bragging about how their beaches were open. Well, now they've seen, you know, a skyrocket in the number of reported COVID-19 cases. And now they're quietly closing their beaches, you know, when they should have done that two weeks ago. Um, in Philadelphia. Now, Philadelphia has clamped down and says that uh, residents should not leave their homes at all unless you are going to work as an essential employee, going to get food or going to get medical attention. Because what happened was is they closed all the schools. You know, people were encouraged to work from home. And now you are seeing people still gathering in public, going to playgrounds, playing basketball games, you know, not not following common sense to socially distance and try and keep this disease from spreading. And so now the government has to take that further step to say, all right, now you can't leave your home. Um, they haven't exactly said like they're, they're not a case where they're going to arrest people, <clears throat> but you probably will get ticketed. You probably will get fined in the city of Philadelphia. And now that it's happened in the city of Philadelphia, um, my assumption is, that will carry over into the surrounding counties as well. So I am waiting to to see how that happens because I'm just outside Philadelphia. Also waiting to see what happens as I go to work um, in Philadelphia tomorrow. Um, I know you've been working from home the past couple of weeks. I know my wife has been working from home, um, and I'm fortunate. I'm are. fortunate that I I'm I'm fortunate that a I work in an industry that has been deemed essential. By the governor of New York, I'm fortunate that uh, my company has not shut down operations and I'm desperately looking for uh, uh, government support to help me uh, uh, put food on the table for my family. I'm fortunate that I have a boss that that um, has deemed that my job can be uh, uh, productive from uh, home as opposed to uh, other employees that I work with who do have to go to work. Um, I consider myself very fortunate right now in comparison to uh, a lot of people uh, in this country right now. Um, and it's you don't know how long that's going to last. No. I mean, you know, I am, you know, be perfect. And, and we've had this conversation. I am surprised that I'm still employed at this point. Um, I will be going from a from a four day work week uh, to a three day work week. Although every day I go into work at this point, I just fully expect to either be laid off um, or that be told that my hotel is being closed down. I mean, it's right. the hotel industry is just being um, just decimated. Um, and at, at this point, you know, it really is. You know, it's really a case of attrition where every hotel is kind of seeing if they can hang on long enough for other hotels to close or suspend operations, you know, to pick up enough of those guests to be able to stay open. You know, we still have a number of people from the healthcare field staying with us. Um, transportation, as far as Amtrak, Greyhound, and the like, staying with us. Um, but, you know, we're, we're just barely at the point where we're staying profitable, or I mean, not even profitable, but not losing money, not losing more money by staying open versus staying closed. So, so it, who actually is, and I don't, I'm not asking for names, sure. but who's actually staying in your hotel right now? I when mean, you say healthcare, like, like, are we talking like doctors who are visiting? We, I mean, we're talking doctors, nurses, healthcare executives. Um, you know, you do have a lot of uh, staffing issues at this point, as you know, people are are treating uh, those that are infected, becoming infected themselves. Um, you know, so they have to bring additional staff in, and they have to put them up someplace. So we are housing a lot of those people. Um, you know, we have also had discussions with hospitals that they may, you know, move some of their low risk patients out of hotels, out of uh, hospital beds into hotel beds uh, to be able to free up rooms uh, to handle the, the influx of uh, COVID-19 patients that they anticipate. So you're saying that you're going to open up your hotel for COVID-19 patients? No, I'm saying we are going to open up 
the hotel for other people in the hospital that they're going to move out. So let's say you are recovering from, you know, uh, some sort of surgery, minor surgery, or, or if you're like an exploded taint, let's say an exploded taint. Exactly. Whereas you don't maybe necessarily need to be in a hospital per se, but you need to be on bed rest. You need to be monitored by a nurse. You don't necessarily need to be in a hospital room. You could be in a hotel room, you know, with your equipment and with the nurse, you know, present. So, um, you know, these are all various ways that hotels are looking to, you know, keep the doors open, keep people employed. Now, as somebody who has worked on the inside of hotels, and I imagine you've heard a lot of the infamous stories of uh, crazy cleanup, uh, how hygienic would that be? to have somebody staying in a hotel instead of a hospital? You know, I think it would be, you know, as as clean as being in a hospital to a certain extent. You know, a lot of people, when this first started, you know, uh, breaking, you know, people were like, well, what, you know, what are you doing from a cleaning perspective in your hotel? And, you know, the truth of it is, you know, the, the goal of cleaning a hotel room is always to clean it, disinfect it. You know, we have, you know, certain cleaning products that we use that re- Regardless of whether it was the coronavirus, whether it was flu, you know, whatever it was, the goal was to clean a hotel room so that the next guest coming in didn't have to worry about anything like that. Got it. Okay. That actually that makes me feel a little bit better about it. Right. Now, you could go the other direction. Um, the, the term that they're using right now is you could become a quote unquote dirty hotel. Um, in that you could just take on, you know, COVID-19 patients. Um, you could take on people that are self-quarantining. You could take on people that um, have taken the, the coronavirus test and are waiting for results. Um, but, you know, you can really only do one or the other. You can have, you know, you can t- make your entire hotel that way, um, or you can make it where you're not going to take anyone that's even remotely suspected of having uh, the coronavirus, but you really can't mix the two populations within one building please tell me you don't go that route i mean i can't picture it i just that's i would stay home if that's the case <laughs> well and again I, I i fully listen i'm going into work this is sunday night i'm going into work tomorrow um i'm fully anticipating to be laid off and at this point God. um i'd be okay with that because i uh, you know i don't want to have to keep going out into public um you know, we, we thought we were going to have to close in general on Thursday. You know, the governor uh, sent out his, uh, his, his, his latest edict last Thursday night saying, you know, all non-life sustaining <coughs> businesses needed to close by 8 p.m. that Thursday night. You know, that went out around 4.30 in the afternoon. And on the initial release, it said that hotels were not uh, a life sustaining business. So we were like, well, I guess we got three and a half hours to close up and relocate all the guests in the hotel somewhere else. Um, and then the governor's office clarified that, well, well, we guess since hotels house people that otherwise would be homeless, maybe that is yeah. life sustaining. So I yeah, actually agree with free. that. No, yeah, I, and I, I agree with it too. I just think, you know, it was something that probably could have been thought out a little bit better. And, you know, that seems to be what has been happening in Pennsylvania a lot is there's been these edicts that come out, these orders that come out, and then they like silently revise them about 50 or 60 times afterwards because they realize a lot of the stuff wasn't um, thought out as well as it could be. I can understand that. I mean, I think, you know, one of the things that I've, you know, at least seen in New York take place is, um, you know, uh, everyone's governing on the fly right now. Everyone's reacting. Uh, you know, I, I genuinely get a sense in, you know, at least in the uh, in the New York uh, infrastructure, whether it's the uh, uh, the state and the uh, city, um, I genuinely feel like they are doing what they can. You know, uh, I don't know that they're able to do anything beyond that. But, uh, you know, so I, I'm giving them a little bit more leeway in terms of things like that, where, uh, you know, they're 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 making announcements and then saying, well, we didn't think of this or think of that. I'm uh, not coming down as harshly on them as I probably would have normally. And surprisingly enough, uh, in your state, you know, Governor Governor Cuomo is actually showing uh, some 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 pretty solid leadership up to this point. I he's one of the few uh, press conferences that I uh, try to make a point of watching every day. 
and uh, someone and again you know you you could you take this for face value someone uh, posted on Twitter that apparently you know there are sources inside the White House that say that Donald Trump get infuriated uh, by Governor Cuomo's press conference because he gets so much you know good press from his press conferences versus people rightfully tearing Donald Trump a new asshole for every one of his sycophant press conferences that go on out there. Well, I just think you've got a, well, I mean, first, I mean, you've got a president who has honestly misplayed this and and I'm not a Donald Trump fan. So I believe, you know, my uh, viewpoints on him may be slightly skewed um, from my, uh, you know, the, 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 the Trump's, you know, the Trump support that he is trying to get. But I feel like he has mishandled this, all, you know, uh, at, at, at every juncture and still to this day is holding press conferences that I believe his aim is to walk away with support rather than to inform the public of what's going on. Well, we do have a couple of uh, audio clips here. So the first one being, and and this is, I think, probably one of the more infamous ones that people will use uh, during a rally he held on February 28th, uh, back when he was referring to it as a hoax. The coronavirus, you know that, right? Coronavirus. And this is their new hoax. We're 15 people in this massive country. And because of the fact that we went early, we went early, we could have had a lot more than that. We're doing great. Our country is doing so great. Um, but even, you know, I, I think if we look at um, what you can call Trump's coronavirus pivot over the last two months going back to late January, um, here's a, a pretty interesting selection of clips um, that will show you how his thought process has changed on this. January 22nd. We have it totally under control. It's one person coming in from China. January 30th. We think we have it very well under control. February 2nd. We pretty much shut it down, coming in from China. February 10th. You know, in April, supposedly it dies with the hotter weather. February 14th. When it gets warm, uh, historically, that has been able to kill the virus. February 25th. People are getting better. They're all getting better. February 26th. And the 15 within a couple of days is going to be down to close to zero. February 27th. It's going to disappear. One day, it's like a miracle. It will disappear. February 28th. And you'll be fine. March 2nd. Uh, They're going to have vaccines, I think, relatively soon. March 3rd. Not only the vaccines, but the therapies. Therapies is sort of another word for cure. March 4th. We're talking about very small numbers in the United States. March 6th. Our numbers are lower than just about anybody. March 10th. It's really working out, and a lot of good things are going to happen. March 11th. And we are responding with great speed and professionalism. March 12th. It's going to go away. March 13th. Yeah, no, I don't take responsibility at all. March 15th. We're going to all be great. We're going to be so good. March 16th. This came up, it, it, we came up so suddenly. March 17th. This is a pandemic. I felt it was a pandemic long before it was called a pandemic. All you had to do is look at other countries. So, Brian, I know you and I have talked about this, but I, I, I am I'm moist with anticipation um, to see all of the uh, all of the TV commercials that will be coming up uh, later this year during the election campaign, whether it's from the Biden campaign, whether it's from the DNC, whether it's from the super PACs that will take clips like that and show just how out of touch Donald Trump was for the first couple of months of this. Um, and again, I think it's it's a very important thing. And, and Joe Biden uh, aired a, uh, someone from the, uh, the, the Obama administration who handled the Ebola uh, pandemic um, speaking about this. He made an important point. He said, you know, uh, the coronavirus is not the fault of Donald Trump. The lack of response during the yes. first couple of months of it in this country is completely on Donald Trump. Yeah. Well, in, you know, during the weeks when he should have been sitting there um, setting up our response, he was politicizing it, claiming that this was a democratic tool to take him down. Um, in the weeks when he should have been, 
ensuring that we had the, uh, you know, increased production of medical supplies to help our hospitals. He was sitting there uh, talking about how we have no cases and nothing to worry about and our number is going to be zero. Now that it is clearly here, the numbers are growing, are extensively growing. Um, I only feel like over the past couple of days, has his tone changed to the point of this is what we are doing to respond to it? And unfortunately, I think a, a you know uh, uh, too much of it has been focused on what we're going to be doing economically, what we are going to be doing to support Wall Street numbers, what we're going to be doing to support businesses and the airline industry. Um, where, you know, this is a public health issue. Um, it's going to affect the economy and it's going to be shit. But uh, let's first figure out how we can survive this with as few people dying. Um, right now, there's this uh, $500 billion bill that is being uh, negotiated in Congress right now. And uh, the, the, the focus here seems to be uh, how do we keep the, the, the American economy going? Well, if, if you've got stay-at-home orders in place gives a shit that there is no economy anymore. All that there is is just how do we keep the supply lines of food and medicine for uh, people to stay alive? Like, that's the economy right now. It's not about making sure their airlines can fly. It's not making sure that, you know, they have uh, the ability to, uh, you know, to uh, uh, issue dividends or or, or pay their uh, executives. It's uh, it, it just seems like his approach to this is anything but what it needs to be and 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 uh, you were saying i think even i think the bill might even be up to two trillion dollars right now uh but it, it couldn't even get moving in the senate because of i guess there is uh <clears throat> what they're calling the mcconnell slush fund that's been put into this stimulus package that puts in all sorts of protections for corporations uh all sorts of benefits for corporations and really doesn't benefit um, individual Americans. And listen, I, I'm part of an industry where, you know, the largest hotel association uh, lobbyist group is asking for $150 billion for the hotel industry um, to pay, you know, to pay employees, the things of that nature. And, and I don't, you know, I don't think the hotel industry should get a bailout. I don't think the airlines should get a bailout. Offer these, you know, these huge companies low interest loans if they really want to be able to continue during this time, because it's exactly right. how small businesses are being expected to, to operate right now. You know, the SBA is offering, I think, loans at like three percent interest. They may even try and cut that to two or one percent. But the, the fact of the matter is the small businesses that attempt to stay open are borrowing money, knowing that they're going to need to pay it back in the future. Why shouldn't large businesses need to do so as well, especially large businesses that benefited the most from the Trump tax plan and then took that extra money they saved from the tax plan to do stock buybacks. And that's why right. they don't have any money right now, because they bought up as much of their private stock as they possibly could. And now they're whining about it. And woe is us. Right. Um, I just saw I just saw in the Huffington Post that Trump is refusing to. Um, say whether he would bar his own company from receiving coronavirus bailout money. Apparently, I I've, I've saw, I think, Mar-a-Lago had to close, which, you know, you feel for the individuals that work at a hotel, but you, you don't feel bad for a, a president that continues to profit off of private businesses that he should have divested from when he became president. Exactly. And exactly. on top of that, it's... we are now also seeing uh, how individual um, senators are benefiting. Um, two in particular, we're looking at uh, Senator Richard Burr and Senator Kelly Loeffler. Uh, apparently back on January 24th, um, there was uh, a meeting uh, with the Senate Health Committee, uh, which uh, is chaired by Kelly Loeffler. Um, and they, it was a private all-senator briefing about the coronavirus. Um, since that meeting on the 24th, uh, Kelly and her husband made 29 stock transactions between then and mid-February, with all but two of them being sales. Uh, she sold somewhere in the ballpark of between 1.3 and 3.1 million in stock. Um, the value of the stock she sold has declined by one third since the market disruption. One of the purchases she made was in Citrix. 
um, which for those of you that work with it, it you know, it's, it's a program that, you know, basically a lot of companies use to facilitate working from home. And it's also one of the few stocks that have actually seen a small bump um, since all this market turmoil has happened. If if this doesn't cause rioting, I, I, I literally give up on this society that we've got <clears throat> representatives, representatives of the people who are um, making a point of uh, publicly downgrading the risk that this coronavirus ran to us as a society. Meanwhile, uh, we're uh, emptying out their uh, uh, their investment accounts because they had uh, inside knowledge that this was going to be worse um, than uh, was being public at the time. If it, 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 I cannot tell you how much this makes my blood boil. Well, and this and is literally it, it, this. I could not find behavior um, more horrendous. Right. You know, and 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 that even allows uh, uh, pedophilia. Well, and let's let's not uh, let's not. Uh, go off of Senator Burr too quickly. He was someone who was at that meeting on the 24th. He was someone who in the public was talking down the risk of coronavirus, but then in a private donor luncheon on February 27th, NPR uh, got uh, recordings of him talking to these donors <laughs> paying $100,000 a plate, him warning them how bad this pandemic could be. Um, and he also sold off stock on February 13th. He sold off somewhere between 628,000 and 1.7 million of his holdings in 22 separate transactions. Um, you could say, oh, maybe he just likes to play in the stock market like that. No, it was his largest stock selling day of at least the last 14 months. Two of he the companies, be in jail. two of the he companies he in divested jail. in, he sold up to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in shares in Wyndham Hotels and Resorts, which has now lost two thirds of its value, and one hundred thousand dollars in shares of Extended Stay America, which has dropped in value by half. Now, he to top be it in jail. off, in two thousand and twelve, um, there was a bill passed by Congress, signed into law by President Obama, called the Stop Trading on Congressional Knowledge, or Stock Act. Uh, it passed the Senate in a 96-3 to vote. The three nay votes, Thomas Coburn, Jeff Bingaman, and would you like to guess who the third nay vote on that act was? Uh, Richard Burr. Richard fucking Burr. Oh, that guy should be in jail right now. He should be in jail with Harvey Weinstein. And, and the shocking thing is, is you even have Fox News saying Richard Burr should resign and be put in jail. So, I mean, it is it is it is as flagrant a abuse of power as we have seen in the last three and a half years. And that's saying something. You know what? It's not even it's it's the financial uh, uh, benefit of this. That's the part that I find so offensive. You know, uh, Trump has abused power for his own personal interests, but it's it's to get reelected. I, 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 I can understand that these people are using, um, you know, private information that they're withholding from the public and to do they're, they're, they're with and they're taking steps and actions so that they can profit off of this. That's the part that offends me the most, that these people are putting money, uh, the dollar ahead of the welfare of the human public. This is the stuff that people should get pissed off after. And, I am pissed. And, and, and Richard Burr had already announced that he's not running for re-election in 2022. You know, he's fortunate. Kelly Loeffler didn't even get elected to office. She replaced somebody who uh, retired. So she will be coming up in front of voters in, 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 later this year. So I hope people remember her behavior. You know, it, it definitely seems wildly illegal that you can trade on information such as that. And there are now a number of uh, Congress people that are saying, you know what, maybe we need to pass a law that states no one in Congress can hold stock while they're yeah. in office. Yeah, it should be the case. Yeah, because they're obviously <coughs> privileged to many pieces of information that the average uh, person does not have. Right. Uh, it's disgusting. It's so fucking disgusting. Now, on the plus side, uh, you know who's got the uh, the the coronavirus? 
Uh, Harvey Weinstein has now tested positive for COVID-19. Um, they are uh, saying that he may have picked it up uh, in Rikers Island. And uh, frankly, I can't think of a better person to get it. I hope he suffers from it. I, ho- I hope so, too. Uh, Rand Paul bad. also testing positive for, uh, for coronavirus. And there's, you know, there's another piece of shit right there. Um, piece of shit. You know, yes. a guy that was holding up votes on the coronavirus stimulus package. Um, and now, you know, he's got the coronavirus. And then he was at a luncheon with uh, all these GOP senators on Friday. So now they're questioning, you know, now they're like, well, we guess we got to self-quarantine. Um, one of yeah. them being Mitt Romney, who uh, Donald Trump during his press conference today uh, seemed to take great delight uh, in the possibility that Mitt Romney might have the coronavirus. I just read that he is self-isolating. So this is uh, this is the type of petty bullshit that we are continuing to see from this president. You know, the comment that that CNN reporter asked, which was as much of a softball question that you can ask any elected official just saying, hey, Americans are scared. What can you say to reassure them? Yeah. Literally the biggest softball you can toss up to anyone to give someone a chance to look presidential, to look like a leader. And and he says, well, you know, I would just tell him you're a horrible reporter. And you're. Oh, you're, it got worse than that. It, got, just, it was worse. It was he, he lost his cool. He genuinely lost his cool. He said it was a nasty question and that you're the problem. Uh, he literally um, he cannot. He, he misinterprets any question from the press other than being from Fox News as a personal attack. And the fact that, you know, we had to wait an hour for Mike Pence to actually give a legitimate answer to the question and try and reassure people um, is, is frightening as well. Like, again, of course, of we, course. we say this each and every week, and unfortunately, it continues to be the same. All of this is going to continue to get worse <clears throat> before it gets better. It will get worse. And not only that. We lost the gambler this week. Kenny Rogers passing away at the age of 81. Man. And this, that, I, I, worth 19 points, by the way. Worth 19 Congratulations points. Congratulations to Dom C. Yes, uh, shooting into second place in the Ron and Brian death pool with that. Um, but, you know, Kenny Rogers was a guy that even if you weren't a country fan, you knew of Kenny Rogers. You, you, you had to love at least one Kenny Rogers song in your life, whether it was The Gambler, uh, Lady, Coward of the County. And remember all those horrible uh, made-for-TV movies they would make after some of his songs. Oh, my God, I forgot those movies. <laughs> that was some some classic uh, classic bad TV um, that I remember from as a child. There was always a story about him that was uh, popular that he used to travel around with a briefcase that was filled with sex toys. <laughs> I had not heard that one before. Hold on. I'm going to look that up. Uh, Kenny Rogers sex toys. Let's see. <laughs> sex toys. Let's and let see. us not forget, um, you know, the uh, the restaurant chain Kenny Rogers <laughs> Roasters. Because that was what? a very you don't you don't remember Kenny Rogers? Oh yeah, Rogers? yeah, yeah. That 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 that'll that that that'll uh, mess you up. <laughs> It'll mess you up. It'll mess you up. I mean, still uh, surprisingly enough, still 156 locations worldwide. Okay. But the weird thing That's is, scary. is now the they're all like that? overseas. Like you can only find them in like Malaysia, Philippines, China, uh, but really nothing in the United States anymore. Good for him. Yeah. I, it doesn't even make I, I So somebody in Malaysia is just like, hey, what do you want to do for dinner today? Let's go over to Kenny Rogers Roasters. Exactly. Do they even know who Kenny Rogers is? I think he is a worldwide icon. Okay. That's just me. That's just my thing. Wow. All right. All right. Well, it's a shame he passed away, created a lot of music that I spent listening to growing up as a kid. Um I think I may listen to some of it tomorrow. Are, are you finding anything about his sex toy briefcase? No, I found something about a phone sex scandal. So it's really just set up. It's an alleged phone uh, uh, sex toy briefcase. Then I'm going to do a little research here. It's important to clarify that. I feel. I think so. I agree with you there. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I think I think we've covered a lot. I don't think we had yep. anything else 
on our list to cover. So uh, again, please go to the Facebook and Twitter pages so you can vote uh, for This Week in Racism. You can also uh, look up the post with our commercial and uh, have a chance to win a Ron and Brian baseball cap. Of course, if you want to just go purchase some stuff on your own, you can go to ronandbrianpodcast.com. It's got all the links to the social media, our web stores on there, our Patreon links on there, and of course, all of our social media links are on there. Uh, Brian, get yourself some rest. Plenty of fluids. Going to. Uh, maybe Going some to. soup um, would be good for you. Um, if I can Try. find a Kenny Rogers roaster, I will send it to you. I hear they Thank are you. delightful. Thank you. Maybe uh, go hit the uh, the BK. Um, get yourself uh, a Whopper. Maybe the Impossible Whopper. Ooh. I hear it tastes just like meat. And uh, uh, that's all I got. Anything else, my friend? Uh, take care of yourself. Take care of your wife. Take care of your family. Right. Everybody take care of each other out there. Uh, stay safe. Stay far away from each other. And uh, we will get through this. All right. We'll catch you all later.